to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Now I want to tell you a little story, and I pray that you will understand and be blessed by it in the name of Jesus. There are three scriptures classically that we use in scripture in discussing the origin of Satan. Um, the first of them, as we see, is Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7 where we read. The Bible lets us know that there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Another name Satan is called. And that the dragon fought and his angels. So we see that Satan at that time already had an organized system of angels too hallelujah praise the lord right so verse 8 and prevailed not neither was there a place found for them anymore that means before that time where were they living they had access to heaven together with the angels are we together now anymore means they once had that access right so let's go to isaiah 14 isaiah 14 now to understand we're going to isaiah 14 and then ezekiel 28 you will have to understand something in theology called prophetic parallels please look up prophetic parallels means that you can use a story to adumbrate you can use a prophetic description to adumbrate something that has happened in time past or something that will happen in the future for instance if i look at you and i say let's say you have a son and his father used to steal and i say young man keep behaving foolishly that is how that man stole and he was thrown away you understand what i'm saying now i'm using the story connected to this man but the warning is to the young man but that there is a story that i'm drawing from are you getting the point now you i need to give you this background so that you will understand what we're about to read because the story we're about to read was written to real kings but based on the law of prophetic parallels it was also um the prophet was using an ancient story to relate and bring a warning to the then kings are you clear on that now so let's go to isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. isaiah 14 from verse 12. this was a description of the fall of lucifer are you ready please look up how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer, son of the morning. That's the meaning of his name. The light bearer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? We are reading to verse 17. Very quickly, verse 2. Or next verse. For thou hast said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Take note. I will be like the most high. 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. Two more verses. 16 now. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? 17. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that openeth not the house of his prisoners. Take note of this because I will be showing you a name and a story that Jesus gave about Satan. That we do not find in scripture the name is a murderer 
he says you are of the your father the devil for from the beginning he was a murderer we never see him killing adam at least the first contact that means there was an old story that even predates adam because jesus called satan he said among the many accusations against satan is that he was a murderer <laughs> ezekiel 28 verse 11 second scripture this is another prophetic parallel it was to the king of tyre but then there is a parallel you will see some things there that could not have happened to an earthly king moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying verse 12 son of man take up a lamentation upon the king of tyros so the lamentation was a warning to the king but he's about to draw a prophetic reference to warn the king saying thus saith the lord god thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom this was the description of lucifer before the fall you are full of wisdom and perfect in beauty verse 13 thou has been in eden are you seeing that earth was created already before the fall of lucifer you have to understand this very very strange <laughs> when lucifer was casted down the bible says he was casted down to earth is that true scientists carbon date rocks and they tell us that the earth is millions and millions of years old they are not lying the oldest man on earth from adam as we know is barely a little above six thousand years is that true but archaeologists and historians have discovered castles they have discovered um um semblances of civilizations that are more than six thousand years ago that means that there is an old story an old story that predates adam let's finish up it says every precious stone was the covering please just just be graphic about this use your mind and look at how satan was that precious stones were his covering the sardius topaz the diamond the beryl the onyx the jasper sapphire emerald and carbon coal and gold the workmanship of thy timbrets and of thy pipes were prepared in the day that thou was created that means satan was created hello satan was you will be learning from this that the arch enemy of satan is not god the arch enemy of satan is man are we together satan is a created being let me quickly give you two scriptures to support that so that there's no confusion satan is a created being in fact three scriptures one is john 1 verse 3 the bible says and for without him all things were made by him how many things that if you ever see anything that appeared it was made by him and without him was not anything made that was made scripture number two colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 colossians 1 and 16 it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven was satan once in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him are we together and then of course the last scripture ezekiel 28 and verse 15 let's continue our reading now i just needed to put that in perspective thou was perfect in thy ways in the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee we are reading to 19 by the multitudes of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of the lord remember psalm 24 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and i will destroy thee O covering cherub so we now see that satan was a cherub 
that covereth in the midst of the stones of fire there's no mention of the king of tyre being in the midst of the stones of fire he would not even survive it 17 okay he said thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty aha uh -huh. the bible is now put in perspective we need to examine why satan would rebel from a place like heaven thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou has corrupted and he said thou has corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness take note of the things that can corrupt people beauty wisdom he said i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee 18. thou has defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore i will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee it shall devour thee i will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee last verse all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee thou shalt be a terror and never shall thou be any more prophetic parallels are you seeing now because the king that this judgment was upon later died but satan is still existing so that's why i told you you see prophetic parallels there are things that could not have been the king and there are things that could not have been satan are you learning so we know that satan was a created being according to scripture that he was lucifer one of the cherubs in heaven that was made according to colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 by god and for his glory but then the bible tells us that something happened revelations 12 tells us there was war in heaven please look up what did satan really want that is really what i want to help us and then we'll pray at least it is enough for us to know that he was created by god no matter what he is and no matter how long he existed we know that he is god's creation but what made satan listen carefully what made satan to rebel against god and what makes satan to still hate men today we need to examine this what is he looking for to answer this question in truth if i'm to do justice to this question there are two schools of thought and all of them are worth considering i will give it to you and then we'll discuss number one the first school of thought is believed that Satan from Ezekiel 28, that Satan wanted to run a parallel government. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. There was an obsession by reason of his beauty. The Bible says his beauty and his excellence and his wisdom flattered him. That is also proven through his manipulation over earthly kings we see nebuchadnezzar also that these kings can be carried away by their beauty and their splendor and they will want to be god and we see that the same kind of judgment that was meted on satan was meted on nebuchadnezzar from a cherub he was thrown down to become nothing nebuchadnezzar from a, an exalted king he was thrown down to become an animal are we together now you can see those parallels so the first school of thought agrees that satan fell because of that desire i don't believe satan wanted to overthrow god he is it's clear that he can't do that but i i know that satan wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose the option of god or him it is still the character of satan till today every time satan studies what god is doing he tries to create an alternative system to it are we together now now the second school of thought which is equally worth considering is the timing of revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 gives us a very serious picture it says that satan was cast to the earth and that means that means that the earth was already there and if the earth is already there, then it also goes to tell us. Um, now, look up, please. <laughs> Where do you think Satan got the idea that he can be like God? Because that idea must have come from somewhere. 
all things consist in God that means you don't have any wisdom outsourced from outside of God so where would it where where do you think Satan would have gotten the idea that it is possible for man to be like God now the second school of thought argue that Satan fell after man was created personally I don't agree with that but I'm going to teach you what I believe are we together just to honor those schools of thought it is believed that when God made man and Satan saw the potential that man had now become in the image of God no creature was ever made in the image of God they were made in the likeness of God that jealousy are you seeing that that desire to be jealous and you see you can see that character consistent with the operation of satan too that every time something new comes that surpasses the old the old fights it you see jacob and esau you see ishmael you see abraham is that true you see all of these parallels that satan saw that man was created now in the image and the likeness of god now i do not believe that for many reasons um number one because according to genesis chapter 1 and verse 31 that is the scripture that i use for my basis to argue away that the bible says and god saw that everything that he had made was good so it would not be possible for god to call everything good when satan are, are you getting the idea now yes everything he had made was good and the evening and the morning came look up please i hope you realize that in the making of man genesis chapter one and genesis chapter two oh dear i wish we have the time there are there are two different contexts of discussions apart now i don't want to confuse you because many people just read their bible from one and two you will see that in the making of man it was creation in Genesis chapter 2 it is the formation of man when God blessed man in Genesis chapter 2 it was Adam man like the spirit of man the woman was in the man when he gave the dominion mandate that is why today in manifesting dominion there is no gender the moment you are in Christ you can manifest that dominion because the woman came out of man in chapter 2 when that formation happened it was simply based on the structure of family and God's organogram that the woman comes under the man but as far as dominion over systems from a spiritual angle the woman has the same ranking there is neither male nor female there is neither Jew nor Greek there is one new man in Christ Jesus came to restore that are we together so the school of thought that says that um, Satan Satan did not fall um, he fell after man if you believe that that Satan fell after man simply because he peeped into the making of man in the image of God and then jealousy came there are many other scriptures that don't agree with that are we together number one Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 theologically speaking we call it the gap theory and we know that the judgment in Genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer no other being was judged to have produced that kind of chaos every judgment that is recorded in scripture as we see had Lucifer behind it from Genesis 1 verse 1 then Noah to every other judgment that has happened to the final judgment that will condemn all men who have refused Jesus Christ satan has always been behind it but this is what i believe based on scripture listen very carefully let me establish my thoughts on this now <clears throat> romans chapter 8 from verse 29 what does satan really want for whom he did foreknow he did he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren verse 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called he also justified 
and whom he justified them he also glorified please look up i believe and this is based on this scripture the bible tells us the entire agenda of man was not one that was being executed real time it was predestined there was a foreknowledge and do not forget the office of satan satan was the light bearer the custodian of the wisdom and the mysteries of god to be predestined and foreordained means there was a time that god designed that that he was going to create a being in his image and in his likeness and satan must have had access to that information based on his office this is what gave him an idea that so god can actually create another species in his image and his likeness and so that began to challenge him to want to work with that treason i will be like the most high if that is the case are we together now yes based on scripture if it is true that man was predestined the whole agenda it was never something that was just executed god scratched his head the bible says this thing was organized watch this we have a government structure in nigeria and in many parts of africa and there are times where when the government wants to do certain things there is a group of intel the dss and the intelligence unit is that true by reason of their office no matter how private and personal what it is the president wants to do or what it is that the executive cabinet want to do by the reason of their office they have to be initiated into this nitty-gritty am i right on that this is government now if there is a traitor among them he can take advantage of that access of his office we have seen it happen across governments is that true this is what i believe happened that there has been a discussion let us make man listen carefully i do not believe let us make man was an idea that just came after he made the trees and the rest no no the bible is just telling you that there was in god's mind this idea it's not just that it was in in verse 26 that the idea just came no let us make man was the motivation behind the recreation of the earth again because the earth was recreated for the sake of man are, are we learning now so because of satan's office as the light bearer the cherub that covereth he's had access to some of these things and the bible says with that he began to nurse that idea in his heart you see the same attitude scattered all through scripture that a man's enemies will have to be members of his own household the one that was used to throw jesus down because you see you can study satan by the consistency of his patterns it was judas that gave jesus away because of jesus had moments when he would talk with them and tell them about establishing an earthly kingdom and about all of these things and it was on the strength of that information judas could liars with other people to say you know what let's kill this man he's going to overthrow you they believed he was talking about a physical government so when they finished their meeting judas was looking at a way of making money from it the same character of the antichrist don't forget the bible says satan entered judas if he entered G judas judas will be a continuation of his original desire the light bearer having the idea that the plan of man not necessarily redemption the plan of man now to be created in the image and the likeness of god that gave him an opportunity and that idea because of access you see the reason why god judged him and you see the reason why satan cannot be forgiven because of the kind of access that he had he was the, his very name lucifer meant the light bearer he was the custodian of the wisdom of god are we together watch this the holy spirit can minister to me today by reason of my oneness with the holy spirit the holy spirit can speak to me look up please and he can tell me 
that this man is going to be a billionaire next week now i have that information what i do with that information is now up to me i can use that information to manipulate this man now do we agree on that now my corruption you see that it will end me a punishment because i have now betrayed the trust that he gave me but i am now privy before it happens to this man i can announce it and tell him sir in two weeks you are going to be a billionaire and truly it will happen like that because i have been granted access are you getting what i'm telling you now yes before it will happen in the earth it happens in the heavens is that true this is what convinces me that lucifer had access to parts of the plan of god for man and when he found out that the image of god is going to be invested to another creature that is not him nor any being in heaven listen you need to know why satan hates you i'm tracing a story for you the greatest desire of satan did not come to him let me prove it to you again by prophetic adumbration look at haman and mordecai when the king said who shall we honor you see the same manifestation of the spirit of the antichrist because a man had access to the king he knew that the king wanted to lift somebody and he said to himself who else you see the parallel of this character across systems who else will the king honor and he gave a very elaborate strategy for honor and he said sorry you are not the one go and do the rest do it for ordinary mordecai who is staying at the city gate and carry you are the one who will push the donkey and say bow the knee that was an insult to mordecai and mordecai went and reported to his wife and the wife said sorry who is this man you are trying to fight he says a jew he said you are finished that means there is a covenant that has given this man an advantage are you learning scripture now yes everywhere you see the spirit of the antichrist there you see that there is always betrayal and you see that there is always treason hmm. satan being the light bearer granted him access to certain secrets of the lord the bible is very clear as to the fact that god can trust men with secrets he can trust men with truths are you learning satan's arch enemy listen carefully is not god god is his creator and even in his fallen state he will acknowledge god satan's arch enemy is man now let me wrap up as we pray what does satan really want what has been his drive for all these probably millions of years and he's not rested why does satan want your family listen carefully why does satan want your health why is he afflicting you with sickness why does satan want to destroy the ministry the man of god why is he destroying your business it's an old story and if you do not know what is satan's motivation you will be shadow boxing around issues not knowing that the issues predate you there are two things that satan is looking for and this is the basis for the entire study of demonology and deliverance two things number one dominion number two transgenerational allegiance this is all satan is looking for his obsession for dominion and number two his obsession for transgenerational allegiance this is what birthed the concept of witchcraft altars patterns everything you see today that destroys people destroys family is a structure driving that goal dominion and allegiance two scriptures and we'll begin to pray matthew chapter 4 satan's obsession for dominion and satan's obsession for allegiance was demonstrated in the very temptation of satan with jesus please look up are we bible students then was jesus led up out of the spirit into the wilderness 
to be tempted of who the devil now um let's go to verse 8 verse 8 quickly please verse 8 again this was the third temptation the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain what did the devil show him the all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them say dominion scripture is revealing to us now satan's obsession he said all these things i will give thee please go back to verse yes and the glories of them now verse 9 all these things i will give you if you will do what and dominion and allegiance that's it satan can suddenly become a giver if you satisfy that condition that means i don't need this keep that scripture please verse 9 i don't need the money look up please believers i don't need your health i don't need your political position i don't need your prosperity i don't need your ministry i don't need longevity in your family it's none of my business there is one thing i need i need you to fall down and worship nebuchadnezzar when you hear the sound of the trumpet and everything fall down and worship the image of the beast fall down and worship how could a man be so driven by this agenda can i tell you this you can easily know who is under the influence of satan by their obsession for these two things their obsession for control not just dominion control and their obsession for human worship is a classic character of satan this is all that satan looks for please listen to me and do you know what satan hates you today because of one thing god gave you that image and he declared that dominion mandate and compelled creation to answer you now you have become the arch enemy of satan look up please if satan if god suddenly removes his image from man and give it to stones you will beg satan you will not get his attention he will not need you again because it's not you he's looking for what is man that thou art mindful of psalm 8 let's wrap up psalm 8 verse 1 O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory? Help those under the anointing. We're about to pray. I sense a very strong anointing here. Verse 2. He says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Now, his contemplations. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained verse 4 what is man what is the psalmist had to sit down and wonder lord what is man that you did not couldn't you have just used satan couldn't you have just used the archangels you left all of them and you came to bring another humanoid species what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 for you have made him a little lower than angels the word there is elohim not angelio elohim you have made him a little lower than yourself in ranking you have crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 thou hast made him to have over what the works of thy hands and you have put all things all things hold on he didn't say all things on earth no all things all things aside from yourself it was adumbrated in the honor of joseph he said joseph i now promote you in everything will be under you it is only on the throne you will be above me this is what was given to him that was what the devil was fighting so that journey from his brothers to potiphar's wife to everything was fighting that position is the same thing that happened to esther the same thing that happened to mordecai these are all adumbrations of what god did to man thou hast made him to have dominion 
over all the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet verse 7 okay so you, you let's just leave verse 6 when you go back and see what paul speaks to the hebrew churches he says in doing so you did not leave anything that was under his feet you find that in hebrews chapter 2 that you did not leave anything out that was not under his feet can i tell you this please look up man not god is satan's arch enemy believing that god is satan's arch enemy is an insult no because even when they were fighting for the body of moses you see that now you see how powerful this ranking is because as at the time satan was fighting with michael over the body of moses satan was fighting as the prince of this world he had collected that authority and michael had to respect him so he could not say i rebuke you he said the lord the authority that is higher than man the only authority higher than man i use that authority to rebuke you because if satan had told if if michael had told satan i rebuke you it would be a compromise of the order when god exalted man he was exalted even above the cherubs above every other thing the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand where are you seated far above thrones dominions every name that is named listen please hear me you have to understand and believe what i'm teaching you it's not about the altar in your village your grandfather was an innocent man who did he just entered the middle of an old story so satan created systems to make sure there is transgenerational allegiance they will stop rain and punish men who do not know neither will they understand so they will go to satan and say let rain come and let our children eat say here is the agreement i will send the rain remember he's a giver suddenly if he will get dominion and allegiance so the fathers on behalf of the land who say satan hunger is killing us through those mediums we will serve you they call him different names but he's the same person okay we will give you a deity worship this deity and the fathers came grandfathers will worship the deity and for as long as they worship the deity he will use the authority of man to bring rain the authority of man is what satan uses to bring rain listen carefully when people are sick when he finds out that people are not that allegiance is compromising there will be a widespread problem within the land and the elders will run back and the the priest or whatever medium can say i'm hungry you who are eating i've not eaten what do you want sir make sure your children come and worship me and you innocently they give back to you you are shouting before you even know left and right they made incisions on your body and made covenants and satan says that's right and then now you just stand before jesus and say i receive you as my lord and satan says what did you say do you know what that means that means you are saying from me oh everything that comes from me will no longer serve you and satan says you have drawn the line everything that is a threat to his allegiance he will fight it through men he will fight it through systems can i tell you this every please look up do you believe what i've taught you so far whether you are yoruba whether you are Igbo whether you are south south whether you are the caribbeans you are northern you are spanish i don't care what region this story has brought all of us into one singular basket this is what satan wants he showed us what he wants and dead jesus don't think he'll be afraid of you he said jesus there is no need to go through all this rigor just bow let me tell you something happens to satan when you worship are you seeing what happens when you worship are you seeing why worship is powerful so he looks at you going down to your knees 
and says for who now and you begin to call his name Jesus and he will say you know what afflict this man in a way that will make Jesus not look like Savior and when the affliction gets too much somebody will tell you there's somebody in the village and you will go and sit down and say I knew he was going to come hear me I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you because truly your freedom has come can I tell you this this is why songs that talk about surrender are so powerful because in doing that it is like it's the it's, it's an insult Satan says for millions of years can I tell you this do you know Satan actually believes that the day is going to come when he will compel the entire creation to come under his lordship he really does it is only you who does not believe it Satan is firing on all four cylinders he still believes he believes that all your family will serve him forget that you are and so when he sees you listen every battle that you read in this Bible came as a result of Satan's perceiving it as a threat to his agenda when he killed children it was not about children he perceived they were saviors in the children when satan causes barrenness today satan does not need children satan he he can peep through the window of prophecy and hear when the holy spirit is speaking to you and say madam a prophet is going to come through your womb and he knows that that prophet will break a 150 year old idol practice he will bring the barrenness of zechariah and elizabeth was not about barrenness it was about john who will ordain jesus who will save the world please look at me god is giving us intelligence apostle i am a sincere person i don't steal i don't kill yet there is an attack on my business let me tell you interpret it now from the lens of who satan is interpret everything that happens in your life from the lens of who satan is not the lens of the village you are coming from that's too small not the lens of the mean it's not about you and your boss from a bigger picture your boss has no business with that he's only an available vessel everything satan will use to frustrate you until he brings you to a point of dominion and transgenerational allegiance hmm. I know this what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world Satan can give you the whole world but he needs something your soul I'm not wasting your time I apologize I know our time is gone we're going to pray but please hear me now you can go back home and know that it's not about the problem that happened in your family it's not about what happened with your grandfather at all it's not even about what is happening between your father and your mother it's not about what is happening with your education satan does not need visas no it's not about your finances he has seen that your finances will do something that would threaten that agenda he will attach it with everything he has please look up my dear one it is not about marriage and children it is because he has seen that in it satan does not attack anything for itself he verifies is there a component in your lifting oh so you now become governor or you become head of parliament and in it many people will receive scholarships to go to good schools and there is a chapel there they will hear a man of god they will be filled with the holy spirit you will not win that election he will fight you what does satan want i will be like the most high i desire it everywhere you see satan 
he's obsessed with his image being erected and men bowing to the image he does not want animals when he came upon nebuchadnezzar he said let a 90 feet stature be built ah! but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are thrones Be vigilant for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour he said do not let Satan take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant that there is an agenda when that agenda was in place your village was not even your village your nation was not even your nation there is an old story about an old serpent, an old agenda. Not only a shoe will reign forever. To your kingdom there'll be no end. Only a shoe will reign forever. Listen, please don't miss any of this series. This is just an introduction. I will be sharing with you in the course of this series some of my encounters with the dark world and you will marvel and wonder where genuine spiritual authority comes from. Can I tell you, this teaching you see and this series is one of the greatest dread of Satan because the power of darkness is the absence of light when light comes now you are gaining perspective you can go back and say mama this our fight is not about two of us now i know this fight is not about you at all this 10 year old fight is not about you i have found out in the volume of the books that there is something about my destiny man of god hear me find comfort why is satan attacking my ministry i will tell you why it is not because of where you come from where you come from is just the obvious answer not the right one i can tell you some of you now begin to look at your life and see all the happenings and see that that roaring lion has been tracing you and saying till now you have not gone down can i tell you this do not cry about all the stories of pain in your life now god is interpreting the writings on the wall the disappointment the shame he fought your marriage he fought your children you lost your child you lost everything and you are wondering to what end is this now i bring you the word of the lord he wants dominion and he wants transgenerational allegiance if you will fall down and worship me that business i will give it to you can i tell you this look up please look up please unfortunately painfully unfortunately there are people today who could not stand because they do not know these truths and they do not have the weapons of victory they said satan i can't go through this i will go back to you and they had that agreement they are some of the celebrities we celebrate around the world today they know what they did 
you don't know it but they know that is why in spite of their fame there is no joy they already know their doom is defined that's why the money does not prosper them that's why in the you see how miserable respectfully speaking some of their lives become in the midst of all the glamour because they know that there is a covenant please hear me some of you right now satan is about to tempt you and he's using financial issues he's using marital issues he's using health issues and they have called you from the village come back remember what we said we will bath you near the river and that's it just bathing no it's not about the water a river does not hurt people there is an allegiance please hear me let me encourage someone as we pray for the sake of those depending on you don't give up don't give up some of you are crying listen to me i'm very serious for the sake of your family members if you give up who else will help them are you not seeing their state that's why god sent you to koinonia here for those of you following that's why he said a read out of fire Only a sure you reign forever to your kingdom there'll be no end only a sure will reign forever please look at me what if rain had bonke gave up what if tl osborne gave up what if billy graham gave up seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses can i tell you this please look at me brothers and sisters this is a word from the lord this is not just a deliverance series you need to go back home and listen to this thing again especially this part what is satan really looking for you are wrong if you think it's your marriage you are wrong if you think it's your health what is it about the cancer and the fibroid and whatever the genotype issue no none of those things there is something he's looking for please look up we're wrapping up please look up in our nation here and many parts of Africa when kidnappers or some of these evil people are looking for people what they do is they try to look for somebody or something dear to you is that true they catch your child or they catch whoever and then sometimes they will now make you to hear the voice of your child and when your child that you gave birth to says daddy please don't leave me like this you can give up that business and say what is business if my child is in the hand of someone and all of a sudden you bring your everything so what satan did was he studied everything dear to you he found out your assignment is dear to you your family is dear to you your business is dear to you and he fashioned an attack hear me now that it seems like he's collected the business he's strangling the business like the voice of that child and making you hear it daddy will you leave this vision like this daddy is this how this family will be without a child and before you know it they say there is somebody it's not exactly evil but we will go to the village he said we should bring a chicken we should bring one granite oil we should bring palm oil we should bring a knife and bring some kinds of things some of you god brought this message to help you because you're on your way going there now be careful can i tell you this desperation is satan's moment the moment satan finds a desperate individual here he comes i spoke to you 10 years ago you didn't listen 10 years later are you willing but only a shoe will reign forever to your kingdom two prayer points prayer point number one 
please pray it from the depth of your heart shout this loud after me everybody say father, father. one more time say father. father in the name of jesus i come by the blood of the lamb and i decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me fashioned against my destiny shall prosper lift your voice and begin to pray no weapon no weapon against my health no weapon against the work of the lord committed to me no weapon someone pray no weapon against my children no weapon are you praying against my job my career my spiritual life Every spirit around your life is on assignment. The spirit of death is on assignment. The spirit of infirmity is on assignment. The spirit of failure is on assignment. They don't come on their own. They are sent by an adversary. Hallelujah. Please look up. I know we've not begun to discuss deliverance proper, but let me use one scripture and we pray. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God. Can I tell you this? Believe me when I tell you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed amplified says is really and unquestionably free free from causes free from yokes bondages of darkness are you ready to pray say father by the blood of jesus the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of abel i dissociate myself from ancestry i dissociate myself from covenants i dissociate myself from activities of bloodline and inheritance i declare that i have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation i am seated with christ lift your voice and begin to pray resist the devil and he will flee resist him and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony pray oh hallelujah Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory. Victory in Jesus Christ. Victory by the blood. Victory over causes. Victory over altars. Victory over yokes. Victory over activities of ancestry. Victory. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of Jesse is worthy. And I looked upon the throne and I saw as it were a lamb that had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which were the seven spirits of God my background does not have to be a disadvantage over me because my grandfather was a herbalist my grandmother was a herbalist I don't have to suffer the consequences of yesterday there is a bailout system for me because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession give Jesus a big hand clap give him a big hand clap of victory dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline